Welcome to the second video in our PixHawk series. In the first video, we put the PixHawk firmware on the board and we went through the basic configuration to connect it to an RC receiver and do the bits and pieces to tell it what level felt like and calibrate things like the accelerometers and gyroscopes and also the magnetometers as well. So now it's ready to install onto a craft. In this video, that's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to take off this APM from this 440 class copter that I've been flying with for a while. Once we've stripped that down, we're going to then install the Pixhawk onto here, configure it and connect it up so it has power and it's also connected to each of the motors out on the arms. Then we'll do the last checks and calibration and then we'll have our first test flight. So by the end of this video, we'll actually have it flying and test hovering in the garden. First thing we'll talk about is going to be power. So to power the Pixhawk, we have two options. The first option and the recommended one is to actually use something like this, which is called a power module. Now this is going to sit between the battery and the power distribution board that's inside the copter and out of it comes a six pin cable. Now this six pin cable plugs into the power socket at the bottom of the Pixhawk and it does a couple of jobs. The first thing it does is actually provide the plus 5 volts that the Pixhawk needs to work. The second thing it does is provide current and voltage sensing information via two of the wires to actually tell the Pixhawk the condition of the flight battery. So this is definitely the way to do it. I'm going to have to snip off the ends, I don't use XT60 connectors here, but I'm going to install this just by the power board underneath where the Pixhawk is going to be installed on the top of the copter. The other option to power the Pixhawk, which isn't recommended, is you can actually power the Pixhawk by plugging in a UBEC into one of these connectors. Now the way it works is the top pin is negative, the middle pin is plus 5 volts, and the bottom pins are signal. Now we're going to plug our ESCs into here in a minute, but for now, I'm not going to bother powering it that way. I'm just going to power it using the power board. The reason for that is that when you connect it over the powering connections at the back, you really need to use something called a Xena diode. So in here, you can actually see the instructions on the Pixhawk website. So we're looking at copter.ardupilot.com slash wiki slash common hyphen Pixhawk hyphen wiring hyphen and hyphen quick hyphen start. I'll put the link in the description so you don't have to type all that but it's very good it actually explains exactly about where you plug in the power module into the power port into the bottom left hand corner that we've just seen and it also talks about powering uh, the Pixhawk off the servo rail. Now I have a Xena diode on order. The way that works is that just makes sure that it can't be any more than 5.6 or 5.7 volts actually on these pins and because the ESCs are going to be providing that kind of voltage in there anyway, there's nothing to stop me connecting one of the power lines coming in from the ESCs to one of these pins. But if I do that, I'm going to pop a Xena diode on there as well, just to make sure it's all working. I'd recommend that for powering the Pixhawk, use the power module and plug it into the power socket. And secondly, pull all of the little red pins out of the connectors to the ESCs and that way you definitely know you're not applying any voltages that you need here unless you've got your hands on a Xena diode and you can put it in as per this diagram and then in that case then absolutely install just one of the red wires from one of the ESCs and that will act as a backup power supply. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to go away and I'm going to strip this frame down. I've already started to unplug things. The great part is that the motor connectors, one, two, three, four, the direction, rotation, and everything of the motors on the frame between APM and Pixhawk is identical. So what I've done, I've actually written on each of these little leads as I've started to take them off, which is one, two, three, and four. And we'll talk about the motor direction when we've uh, got the Pixhawk installed on here. But let me just stop the video, start taking this apart, and come with a clean frame so we can start plugging things in. So here's the frame with all the pieces stripped off. We have the ESCs coming out the back. This is going to be the front for me. I know a lot of people have the white arms as the front, but just a historic thing. Red, to me, always looks like the front. So what I'm going to do is um, put the Pixhawk 
on top of the anti-vibration mount that's on the top of the chassis, making sure that the arrow is facing forward. So I'm going to attach that there. You want the Pix Hawk as close to the center of gravity as possible. That'll give it the best sensation of movement. Next thing I'm going to do is then I'm going to fit the buzzer somewhere on the frame. I would always recommend try and fit this as far away from the main flight controller as you can. When it uh, makes a noise, it's making a lot of electrical interference and noise, so get that far away. I'm going to also put on the safety switch. I'll probably just zip tie this out um, on one of the arms. That way I can see it and press it quite easily. I get this won't um, get in the way really. It just needs to be somewhere where I can get to it easily. And then finally, I uh, need to install the GPS. Now I'll just move the um, craft a little bit to take the pix hook off. You'll notice that I've installed a big post that the GPS is going to go on the top of. The reason it's going to go all the way up there is because those that magnetometer and compass will benefit from being as far away from the rest of the flight electronics as possible. One, it will give the clearest view of the sky for the GPS, and secondly, that magnetometer won't be interfered with with all the power that's running around underneath the Pixhawk itself. With that and the radio receiver, let me just go and pop all these different bits on, and we'll come back and look at them all plugged in. So here we are, it's all together. That was a fun 40 minutes. So we've installed the Pixhawk with the foam on top of the anti-vibration mount. This again is the front of the craft, so just off to the left. We've also then installed the receiver and plugged that into the RC in port. We haven't connected any of the ESCs yet, but what we have done, I have installed the power module, which is just down here out of sight. So as you plug the battery in, it goes through the power module into the power distribution board. That then comes out the side and plugs into the power port here. If I turn it round, then here's the other side. So you can see from this angle, the GPS is mounted up here on the stalk with the arrow facing the same way as the arrow on the Pixhawk itself. We also have the uh, little safety switch. Now interestingly, the holes that are on the top of the F450 frame are exactly the right width for this to be captured. So I've just pushed mine down in here. So I've got a nice easy position for it. I've put the buzzer um, under here at the back and both of those are fed through. So we have the switch going into the middle position and the buzzer going into the top of the board here. And of course then, the only thing we have plugged into the Pixhawk right now is we have the GPS connection from the GPS from this wire and the other wire going into the I2C connection and that's going to give us our compass that's mounted up here out the way. So, we have done most of the hard work. The next thing we need to talk about then is how we connect the ESCs into the Pixhawk to make it all work. So here we are back looking at the ardupilot.com website. This is the part which is talking about the initial setup and the assembly instructions specifically talking about connecting ESCs. I'll put a link into the description so you can find this page, but it lists all the different frame types and orientations that you could possibly think of. We obviously have a quadcopter and there are three options for quadcopter layout. We have the one on the right hand side. So it makes installing the motors really straightforward. We can see that motors 1 and 2, which is the top right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner, both have to turn anti-clockwise and they plug into the motor outputs 1 and 2 at the back of the Pixhawk, we can see at the bottom of the image. And then we have our other two motors, which is the top left and bottom right, which is motors 3 and 4 respectively. These ones need to be set up to turn in a clockwise direction and these would plug into outputs 3 and 4. Again, designated in this diagram by the little two green arrows above the 3 and 4 outputs. If you're an APM pilot, then this is really straightforward because this is exactly the same layout as APM. So you can unplug your 1, 2, 3, 4 ESC wires from the back of your APM and plug them back straight into 1, 2, 3, 4 on the back of the Pixhawk. If you're building your model from scratch, then I would keep this image handy. And as you're putting the arms on your model and you're connecting up your ESCs and pulling the wires through the frame, I would actually mark on each lead, just like I did with a Sharpie pen, just each of the numbers. So when you put the first arm on, maybe it's the top right hand side, which is motor one, just write a little number one on that 
servo lead that's connected to that ESC and then when you're ready to connect it all in it'll be a piece of cake. So now we've got that done the only last thing we need to think about before plugging this in is about the power connections. We've talked briefly about it on the way to this part of the video. I would recommend if you're going to power the Pixhawk with the power module don't put any of the red wires in. Just tease them out of the servo connectors, just uh, peel them back and secure them with a little bit of heat shrink so that they're not in the way. We'll talk later in the series about your different options with switched versus linear versus Optio versus universal battery eliminator circuits and all kinds of things getting plugged into these output rails on the Pixhawk and using a Zena diode to actually make sure that the voltage on these back pins never exceeds about 5.6 to 5.7 volts. We'll cover that in detail in a separate video. For now, I'd recommend use the power module, let the power module take the strain and power everything, tease out the middle wires from your ESCs, and then just connect them so that the negative wire is at the top and the signal wire is at the bottom. So let me go and do that, and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the frame. And the last thing we'll do then is we'll remove the props before we power it up for the first time. We want to make sure that there is no nasty surprises and we don't have an uncommanded start of the motors and props because that gets messy really quick. So let me do that and we'll come back and have a look. So I've plugged in the ESCs in one, two, three, and four, making sure that I'm plugging in the right motors into the right inputs. Obviously make sure that the polarity is right. Don't forget that the top pin on the Pixhawk is the negative, so it's either got to be black or brown, and the signal is um, at the bottom, and the red plus five volts is going to be in the middle. And only connect the plus five volts from one of the ESCs, and if you're going to do it, it's easier to plug in a Zena diode as well, just to make sure the voltage doesn't go above 5.7 volts. You'll notice on here, I have removed all the props. We are almost at the point here when we're going to plug in a flight battery for the very first time. Then connect it to Mission Planner and do a couple of things. Once we plug it in and start looking at it in anger, we'll start to notice a lot of flashing lights going on. And these flashing lights actually mean something. So let me put up a slide or two just to explain what they do. The first lot we're going to talk about is the main LED. The main LED on the Pixhawk is this one right in the middle of the board. It's the super bright one when it's lit. And then of course we have our little safety switch that we installed down here that's flashing red as well. So the main LED status, which is that one on the top of the Pixhawk, uh, just behind the front of the board, if it's flashing red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, that means it's initialising, it's a please wait. If it's double flashing, then a pause, then single flash, it means system error. The two that you're going to see the most often are going to be the intermittent flashing blue LED, which is where it's looking for a GPS lock, or an intermittent flashing green LED, which is where it's got a GPS lock and it's ready to go. Once you arm the board, it goes from that intermittent flashing green LED for GPS lock to a fully on LED, which bright green, fully lit, the board is ready to fly. And then you have some other fail safe and error conditions below, which is either intermittent flashing yellow bits and pieces or yellow and blue. The safety switch as well will give you a visual indicator of what's going on on the craft. So if it is a double flash, pause, single flash, then that's the system check. That's what it does as it's booting up. And then if it's just flashing on and off, that is it waiting for you to press the button. Once you've pressed it, then once it's on um, pretty much all the time, then you are ready to go on the board. So if we go back to the bench, let's just talk a little bit about the arming process. So what we've got to do here is two things. So unlike some other flight controllers, well, all we need to do is typically hold the stick to the bottom right hand position for the throttle, and that's what arms the board. With the Pixhawk, there's an additional step. Before it will arm, you have to press the safety switch first so that we get that solid light, red light. And then once that solid red light is on, then we're going to arm the board using the standard throttle to the low position over to the right hand side. We are going to plug this into the PC in a second into Mission Planner and just confirm that that's the case. And once it's armed, we're going to power it on 
and spin up the motors and that's why the props are off but for the first time we plug in the flight battery we're not 100% sure what's going to happen so we always go safety first if we run the motors it's also a good idea to check that the rotation is right and the clockwise and counterclockwise in each of the corners all make sense so let me fire up the netbook, let's go and plug this thing in and uh, connect it up. Let's first of all check that level looks like level, that everything turns on, that the flashing LEDs look right and then we will try and arm the board and run the motors and if that all works then it's out into the back garden for our first test hover. So let's plug in the flight battery. I would always recommend before you do this one last final check to make sure that everything works. Okay. So that's looking promising. We have our uh, red LED flashing, we have our blue flashing light, and that means that we actually are ready. So let me plug it into the computer as well. And then let's connect and see what we can see in Mission Planner. Okay, fantastic. A couple of things here. One, we can see it looks level. Secondly, we can also see that the orientation, the, it's um, pointing in the right direction with comparison to where I am on the ground. That's great. Let's just see if we can arm it. So I'm going to press the switch first. And then I'm going to arm the copter by holding the bottom stick to the bottom right hand side. Now we are armed. Let's try the motors. That all looks fantastic. Okay, let me put the props on then. I think it's time we went outside. So just before we get to the test flights, just want to share one thing with you. So here we are connected to the Pixhawk on our laptop again. Uh, what I've discovered is that the elevator, just like on the APM, has to be reversed on the radio for it to work properly. So let me just jump into initial setup, go into mandatory hardware, radio calibration. You'll notice that as I move the throttle, the throttle channel moves up and down on the screen. As I move the rudder, the rudder moves in the same way as the stick and the aileron goes uh, or roll goes with the same way as the stick as well. The elevator or pitch is different just like with the APM that's the way the channel has to work as you put the stick to the top the value has to fall and vice versa. Make sure it's like this before you try your first test flight. Um, my test flight was fine as you'll see in a second but um, having to reverse the elevator while you're flying is kind of exciting. So make sure you've done that. Let's see that test flight. So I've just pressed the arming switch so it's ready to arm and I'm just going to hold the throttle at its lowest right position. And we'll just have a gentle fly around the back garden I'm doing two things here, just making sure that all the controls are okay, just watching for how it behaves. I may need a little bit more expo on the controls for the Tyrannus. But all in all, a very successful first test flight. It flies. So in the next video what we'll do is we'll actually have a look at the Tirana's radio itself and we'll go through the setup piece by piece including how to get it so that you can get access to all of the six modes available on the Pixhawk. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.